All right, what's going on today? Super windy. We are right in the middle of today's topic. Today we're gonna to talk about cold fronts and kind of the concepts that I apply and a lot of times I feel like it helps me get more bites. You know, this is this is a major area where I differ with a lot, lot, lot of people. Post frontal conditions. Typically that's when I catch some of my absolute biggest fish. The 10 pounder I caught at St. John's was post frontal and then like just throughout the years i think back to tournaments and how many of those six seven pound bass i've caught in post frontal conditions where people think that it's bad fishing and it is typically for getting bites and it is for the way that you have to fish but for me i feel like i catch some of the biggest fish i catch all year completely post frontal and we just had us a gnarly one i fished a tournament yesterday at daylight it was 66 degrees i'm talking about First thing in the morning, 66 degrees, rained off and on all day, and then today when I woke up, it was 30 degrees outside. Major cold front came through. The air temps, super low right now. We had a lot of snow in northern Alabama. We had some snow in Tennessee. We had some snow all over the country, but not quite where I live. A little, too, little bit too far south for, for snow. But a couple things that I do whenever it's post frontal. The number one thing I do, I know the fish are not as aggressive and a lot of times it seems to me like the sun is just not quite as bright or maybe it's just I don't know what's going on but it just feels to me like directly after a cold front there's not as much light penetration into the water. We talked about this in the last video I did about how in the winter there's less light penetration well after a cold front that is like another level to it. It just seems like those fish are not super active and there's less light penetration so I'm going to again brighten it up. If I'm going to throw crankbaits. Like here's, here's one of my favorite ones for the winter in general, but also for a cold front. This is Spring Crawl Spro Little John. This is a regular Little John. Really bright color, but also kind of natural. Looks like a, you know, just, I mean, it, for as natural as chartreuse can be, but it's got the brown back on it. It does look kind of like it could be a bluegill, or it could just be something that looks like it fits in in that muddy water. So I'm going to go a little bit brighter, especially whenever those fish have a, like, they're not super aggressive. They're not out actively feeding. They're not out looking to go hunt down bait. So I want to make sure they can see my bait from as far away as possible. And that's the, you know, applying the same kind of concept. I'm going to use a lot of black and blue jigs. This right here is a black and blue ace jig. I got a really bright blue trailer on it. I just know they're going to be able to see this bait from further away than they can see a green pumpkin or a dirty crawl, which is what I've been skipping around for a while now is a dirty crawl. I know they're going to be able to see this black and blue from a little bit further away, and when they're not being aggressive and not out actually trying to hunt down bait, I feel like it can make them react a little bit better. So that's the concept I use for this and this. Now, one of the main things that I do is slow down, and I said that in the last video also, but during the cold front, that is times 10. And one of the main things I slow down is typically I don't slow down my boat. So I'll, I'll wind my bait slower and I'll wind it super slow through the strike zone, but I still keep my boat going pretty fast. I cover a lot of water. Not right now. When there's a cold front, especially a cold front in the winter, I make repeated casts to the same piece of cover. If I've got something under a dock, if I skip, if I skip this jig under a dock, and I hit a piece of brush or I hit a rock or I hit something that just feels like there should have been a fish there, I might make six or seven more casts to that exact same piece of cover with this jig, just trying to hit it and keep hopping it in front of that fish's face. And these are about the only conditions where I've made that work and noticeably got a lot of bites to make repeated casts to the same types of cover. So if I'm throwing this bait around riprap, I'm going to always go to you know, the riprap, I'm gonna go to the steeper bluffy style banks. I'm gonna go to places that are more of a 45 degree bank, a, like a 45 or steeper. So a 45 or steeper. I don't wanna fish after cold front on the super flat type of stuff. That's more for a warming trend this time of year. So I'm gonna take this bait, I'm gonna make repeated casts down the corner of a riprap, repeated cast down you know a bluff end re repeated cast over a stump a lay down tree i'm gonna hit it from a bunch of different angles and keep making that cast because i know the fish that are in there are not aggressively feeding so i need to put this in front of their face as many times as possible and up my chance of that fish actually biting that bait now this right here they all this all kind of ties together i've got you know, lighter weight jigs. I'm gonna throw three eight ounce jigs. I'm gonna throw spinner baits and stuff with bigger blades. Cause like I said in the last video, I'm gonna slow down for sure. I'm definitely gonna slow down. I'm gonna make sure that whatever I'm throwing, you know, I can wind it slower than I'm normally gonna wanna wind stuff. So a uh, 
Will a loose spinner spinnerbait, I'm kind of burning that on the surface. I'm reeling it kind of fast and still keeping it down. This bait right here, I'm gonna use Colorado blades after a cold front. I think that's one of the reasons I catch bigger one is because I upsize my bait also. I will take this spinnerbait right here and where I'll normally put a three, three and a half inch swim bait on back and I cut down. I'll take a three and a half inch swim bait and actually cut it down some to where it's only like two and three quarter inches or three inches. Now I'm gonna take a five inch swim bait with a big paddle tail on back and I, or I'll take a some kind of a trailer that creates a ton of lift, a ton of action. I'm gonna put that I don't really want a ton of action, but I do want a ton of lift. And the reason I want that is gonna keep that bait in the strike zone that, that I want it to be in, and I can really even slower. So I'm gonna take a five inch swim bait, cut it down, put it on back of this, and it's gonna make a really big profile. And the good thing about that is, the fish will be able to feel it coming from a long way away, and it's such a big profile, they know that if they do attack this bait and they do eat this bait, they're not gonna have to feed again for a while because their metabolism's slower. So I, I like to throw bigger baits this time of year. Now. Another thing I'm going to get into as far as the concept is where do the fish go whenever there's a cold front? Basically, they do a couple of different things. If there's been a slow cooling trend where the water's just getting a little bit cooler, those fish will actually kind of beat the bait fish to the places. So those little pinch points where the bait fish get, that's where the bass are going to go. When there's a cold front that hits them in the head like we've had just now, it's going to make them fish move instantly. And they'll typically move in two ways. Number one, they'll find deep water, which will be like the riprap 45 degree banks. On some lakes, that might be the deepest water as close to the bank as possible, or they're gonna get on the bluffy type stuff, and they're almost always gonna wanna be on some type of a rock bottom. That rock bottom just holds heat, it's a little bit harder for them, and they like to get down there and kinda lay their bellies on those rocks whenever it's a super cold front. So that's number one, how they'll move, and number two is they really bury up in the cover. If you're fishing a place with a lot of vegetation, they'll really burrow and bury themselves underneath those grass mats if there's still some grass mats, they'll get in there and they'll they'll actually sometimes later in the day put their backs all the way up against the top of those grass mats and they might only be two or three inches under the water and they're just trying to soak up the heat from that grass getting, you know, pounded by the sun all day. And a lot of times whenever I'm fishing around here in Alabama, one thing they'll do is they'll get super tight to hard cover. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to do with these reaction baits is I'm almost always trying to deflect these off of something whether it be rock, wood, dock post, lay down trees, stumps, whatever it can be, brush piles, whatever it is, I'm trying to deflect these actually off the pieces of cover. So I'm going to take these baits and I'm gonna make repeated cover to the same lay down tree. I'm gonna keep bumping it, I'm gonna keep bumping it, and I'm gonna keep bumping it because I know those fish are either gonna back off or they're gonna get extremely tight to cover. Another thing that I like to do is I like to rely on the reaction strike because it's just their nature. It's the fish's nature. Sometimes whenever a fish is not super aggressive or not out there actually feeding, you can still get those fish to bite. And that's why we call it a reaction strike. You put it in front of their face so fast or it deflects right off the piece of cover and they don't even know what they've done and they've already ate the bait. So I really like to rely on the reaction strike post frontal especially. And if I'm going to flip something around, it's usually gonna be a big jig or Another thing that I'll do, especially if we're fishing a lake that has a lot of spotted bass, like with the one we're out in front of today, or you know we have a little bit clear water, a lot of times if, it, if the water's super clear after a cold front, this is the bait that I'm gonna take to those big bluffy banks or even the riprap. This is just a shaky head with like a six inch finesse worm. This is actually a shaky head that we're working on right now with untamed tackle. It's one that I've been throwing for a while now. But this time of year, whenever it hits them in the head, whenever that cold front knocks those bass in the head and they get as tight as they can to that rock bottom, and they're pretty much laying their bellies on that rock bottom, I feel like when you drag just a dang six inch finesse worm on a shaky head by their face, it's your best way to get a lot of bites after a cold front. And getting a lot of bites is tough to do. But, but this is just the perfect like type of bait because they're laying on those rocks so that's my four or five things another thing you're fishing around a lot of spotted bass obviously you'll get on those places close to those bluffs and throw a jerk bait a little bit off the bank 15 feet 20 feet 25 feet off the bank where it's in super deep water and throw that jerk bait over their head but for the most part where i'm fishing in alabama they get extremely tight to cover whether it be wood or whether it be rock, which is where I target primarily after, you know, there's a cold front. So that's just kind of one I want to break down to y'all. I did have a jerk bait, but I don't have one in the in the box with me that I was going to show y'all because that is a big thing that you do. Is a, 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 One big pattern is 
if there's been fish feeding on bait in some kind of flats on, on you know on some flats or some flat pockets or whatever you can go there pull up your map and find the deepest water as close to those flats you can possibly find and then go throw you a jerk bait right over the top of that deep water and a lot of times those fish will school up there and it's not a very aggressive bite and you typically don't hook them too good but you can still generate some bites and put some fish in the boat like that so that's my concept that i apply for how i you know tackle cold fronts and i try not to just tell y'all hey this is the bait that you have to have even though this is a really really good one i try not to say this is what you have to do i try to tell y'all the way that i think about things and the concepts that i apply so that if y'all see some situations y'all can do that and y'all can start thinking about fishing like hey i've got this concept that i apply you know in these situations and you can kind of use it all around the country so i'm not going to tell you that some bait works perfect on some lake because that doesn't help you wherever you might be from so that's the way that i tackle cold front bass fishing and I'm glad I'm not on the boat today because it is blowing and it is cold. So hope y'all enjoyed that video. I appreciate y'all watching and we'll see y'all. It's 2022 now. So we're trying to, our New Year's resolution is ramp up some YouTube videos. So let's get this sucker rolling.